Welcome to Summary Secrets, your daily personal growth companion. In today's video, we'll be uncovering the top lessons from the goal, a process of ongoing improvement by Aliyao M. Goldratt and Jeff Cox. If you're ready to unlock the secrets within this book and gain valuable insights, let's dive right in. Lesson 1. Identify the goal of the system or process. The first lesson emphasizes the importance of identifying the goal of a system or process. This means understanding the ultimate purpose or objective that the system or process is meant to achieve. By clearly defining the goal, you can align all your efforts and resources towards achieving it. For example, imagine you are a manager in a manufacturing company. The goal of your system or process might be to maximize production output while minimizing costs. By identifying this goal, you can focus on improving efficiency, reducing waste, and optimizing resources to achieve higher productivity and lower expenses. Another example could be a customer service department in a retail company. The goal of this system or process might be to provide excellent customer satisfaction. By recognizing this goal, you can prioritize training and empowering your employees to deliver exceptional service, implementing effective communication channels, and continuously improving the customer experience. Without a clear understanding of the goal, you may end up wasting time and resources on activities that do not contribute to the desired outcome. By identifying the goal, you can make informed decisions and prioritize actions that directly support the achievement of that goal. In summary, lesson number one highlights the importance of identifying the goal of a system or process. By doing so, you can align your efforts and resources towards achieving that goal, leading to improved efficiency, effectiveness, and overall success. Lesson 2. Focus on the constraints or bottlenecks that limit the system's performance. In order to improve the overall performance of a system, it is crucial to identify and focus on the constraints or bottlenecks that limit its efficiency. These constraints can be thought of as the weakest links in the system, where any improvement made elsewhere will have little impact if these constraints are not addressed. To understand this concept, imagine a manufacturing process where different machines are involved in producing a product. Each machine has a certain capacity or speed at which it can operate. If one machine is significantly slower than the others, it becomes the bottleneck or constraint in the system. No matter how fast the other machines work, the overall production will be limited by the speed of this particular machine. By focusing on the constraints, you can identify ways to improve their performance and increase the overall efficiency of the system. This could involve finding ways to increase the capacity of the bottleneck machine, optimizing its operation, or even replacing it with a faster machine. By doing so, you can ensure that the system operates at its maximum potential and that improvements made elsewhere in the system are not wasted. For example, let's say you are managing a call center where agents handle customer inquiries. The average call duration is 5 minutes, but there is one agent who consistently takes longer to handle calls, averaging 10 minutes per call. This agent becomes the bottleneck in the system, as the overall performance of the call center is limited by their slower pace. To address this constraint, you could provide additional training or support to help the agent improve their efficiency. Alternatively, you could redistribute the workload by assigning more calls to other agents who are faster, thereby reducing the impact of the bottleneck. By focusing on the constraint and finding ways to improve its performance, you can enhance the overall productivity and effectiveness of the call center. In conclusion, identifying and focusing on the constraints or bottlenecks that limit a system's performance is essential for achieving overall improvement. By addressing these constraints, you can optimize the system's efficiency and ensure that improvements made elsewhere are not wasted. Lesson 3. Utilize the theory of constraints to identify and address the most critical constraints. In order to improve your processes and achieve ongoing improvement, it is crucial to utilize the theory of constraints. This theory helps you identify and address the most critical constraints that are limiting your productivity and efficiency. Constraints can be anything that hinders the flow of your processes, such as bottlenecks or limitations in resources. The theory of constraints teaches you to focus on these constraints and find ways to overcome them. To identify the most critical constraints, 
You need to analyze your processes and determine which steps or resources are causing the biggest delays or problems. For example, if you are running a manufacturing plant and notice that a particular machine is constantly breaking down, causing production delays, that machine would be a critical constraint. Once you have identified the constraints, the next step is to address them. This can be done through various strategies, such as increasing the capacity of the constraint, finding alternative resources, or changing the way the process is structured. For instance, if the constraint in the manufacturing plant is a machine that frequently breaks down, you could invest in better maintenance practices or even consider replacing the machine with a more reliable one. By addressing the constraint, you can improve the overall flow of the process and increase productivity. It is important to note that constraints can change over time, so it is necessary to constantly monitor and reassess your processes. By utilizing the theory of constraints, you can continuously identify and address the most critical constraints, leading to ongoing improvement and increased efficiency in your operations. Lesson 4. Implement measures to increase the capacity of the constraints. In lesson number four, you learn about the importance of implementing measures to increase the capacity of the constraints in your organization. Constraints are the bottlenecks or limitations that prevent your system from operating at its maximum potential. By increasing the capacity of these constraints, you can improve the overall efficiency and productivity of your organization. One way to increase the capacity of a constraint is by investing in additional resources or equipment. For example, if a machine is the constraint in your manufacturing process, you can consider purchasing a new machine or upgrading the existing one to increase its capacity. This will allow you to produce more output in a given amount of time and reduce the waiting time for other processes. Another approach is to optimize the scheduling and sequencing of tasks to minimize the idle time of the constraint. By ensuring that the constraint is always working on the most critical tasks, you can maximize its utilization and output. For instance, if a skilled employee is the constraint in your service-based business, you can prioritize their tasks and allocate their time efficiently to ensure they are always working on high-priority projects. Additionally, you can implement cross-training programs to develop the skills of your employees and enable them to work on multiple tasks. This way, if the constraint is a specific skill set, you can have multiple employees who are capable of performing that task, reducing the dependency on a single individual and increasing the overall capacity. Furthermore, you can consider outsourcing certain tasks or collaborating with external partners to alleviate the constraints within your organization. By leveraging the expertise and resources of external entities, you can overcome the limitations of your internal constraints and improve the overall system capacity. In conclusion, implementing measures to increase the capacity of the constraints is crucial for optimizing the efficiency and productivity of your organization. By investing in resources, optimizing scheduling, cross-training employees, and considering external collaborations, you can effectively overcome the limitations and bottlenecks within your system, leading to improved performance and success. Lesson 5. Balance the flow of work through the system to prevent overloading or underutilization. In lesson number five, you learn the importance of balancing the flow of work through the system to avoid overloading or underutilization. This concept is crucial for ensuring the efficiency and effectiveness of your processes. Imagine a manufacturing plant that produces cars. If the assembly line is overloaded with too many cars waiting to be worked on, it can lead to bottlenecks and delays. On the other hand, if there are not enough cars in the system, the workers and resources are underutilized, resulting in wasted time and money. To prevent overloading, you need to carefully manage the input and output of work. This means ensuring that the work being fed into the system matches the capacity of the system to process it. For example, if the assembly line can handle 10 cars per hour, you should not introduce more than 10 cars into the system within that time frame. Similarly, you need to prevent underutilization by keeping the system busy and productive. If there are idle workers or resources, it indicates that the flow of work is not balanced. To address this, you can adjust the input of work to match the capacity of the system or find ways to utilize the idle resources more effectively. 
Balancing the flow of work also involves identifying and resolving bottlenecks in the system. Bottlenecks are points in the process where the flow of work is restricted, causing delays and inefficiencies. By identifying and addressing these bottlenecks, you can ensure a smooth and continuous flow of work through the system. Overall, balancing the flow of work through the system is essential for optimizing productivity and minimizing waste. By managing the input and output of work, preventing overloading and underutilization, and addressing bottlenecks, you can achieve a more efficient and effective process. Lesson 6. Implement buffer management to ensure smooth flow and minimize disruptions. In order to ensure a smooth flow and minimize disruptions in your processes, it is crucial to implement buffer management. Buffer management involves strategically placing buffers at critical points in your system to protect against variability and ensure a steady flow of work. Imagine you are managing a manufacturing plant that produces cars. One critical point in your process is the assembly line, where various components are put together to create the final product. Without buffer management, any disruption or delay in the assembly line could have a domino effect on the entire production process. By implementing buffer management, you would place a buffer of partially assembled cars before the assembly line. This buffer acts as a safety net, absorbing any disruptions or delays that may occur. If there is a problem on the assembly line, the buffer allows work to continue without interruption, ensuring a smooth flow of cars through the production process. Another example of buffer management can be seen in project management. Let's say you are managing a software development project with multiple teams working on different modules. Each team has its own set of tasks and dependencies. Without buffer management, any delay or issue in one team's work could cause a ripple effect, impacting the entire project timeline. By implementing buffer management, you would create buffers between teams or modules. These buffers allow for some flexibility in the project timeline ensuring that any delays or disruptions in one area can be absorbed without affecting the overall project schedule. This way, you can maintain a smooth flow of work and minimize disruptions. In summary, buffer management is a crucial concept in ensuring a smooth flow and minimizing disruptions in your processes. By strategically placing buffers at critical points, you can protect against variability and absorb any delays or disruptions that may occur. This allows for a more efficient and reliable workflow, ultimately leading to improved productivity and customer satisfaction. Lesson 7. Emphasize the importance of time as a key metric for evaluating system performance. In lesson number 7, the importance of time as a key metric for evaluating system performance is emphasized. Time plays a crucial role in determining the efficiency and effectiveness of a system. By focusing on time, you can identify bottlenecks and areas of improvement within the system. For example, let's consider a manufacturing process. If it takes a long time for a product to move from one stage to another, it indicates a delay in the system. This delay not only affects the overall productivity, but also increases the lead time for customers. By measuring the time taken at each stage, you can pinpoint the specific areas that need attention and work towards reducing the time required. Another example is in the context of customer service. If it takes a long time for a customer to get a response or resolution to their query, it reflects poorly on the system's performance. By tracking the time taken to address customer issues, you can identify areas where the process can be streamlined to provide faster and more efficient service. By emphasizing the importance of time as a key metric, you are able to focus on improving the overall system performance. This can be achieved by reducing lead times, eliminating bottlenecks, and increasing productivity. Ultimately, by prioritizing time, you can ensure that the system operates at its optimal level, delivering value to both the organization and its customers. Lesson 8. Implement continuous improvement processes to constantly identify and address bottlenecks. In lesson number 8, you learn about the importance of implementing continuous improvement processes to identify and address bottlenecks in your operations. This means constantly striving to find ways to improve your processes and remove any obstacles that may be slowing down your productivity. 
One way to implement continuous improvement is by regularly analyzing your operations to identify any bottlenecks or areas of inefficiency. For example, you could track the time it takes for a task to move from one stage to another and identify any stages where there is a significant delay. By pinpointing these bottlenecks, you can then focus on finding ways to streamline those particular stages and improve overall efficiency. Another important aspect of continuous improvement is involving your team in the process. Encourage them to provide feedback and suggestions for improvement. They are the ones who are directly involved in the day-to-day -day operations and may have valuable insights on how to address bottlenecks. By creating a culture of continuous improvement, you can tap into the collective knowledge and experience of your team to drive positive change. Additionally, it is crucial to regularly review and update your processes to ensure they are still effective. As your business evolves and grows, new bottlenecks may arise and old ones may be resolved. By constantly monitoring and adjusting your processes, you can stay ahead of any potential issues and maintain a high level of efficiency. Overall, implementing continuous improvement processes is about being proactive in identifying and addressing bottlenecks. By regularly analyzing your operations, involving your team, and updating your processes, you can ensure that your business is constantly improving and operating at its full potential. Lesson 9. Foster a culture of collaboration and communication to facilitate problem solving and decision making. In lesson number nine, you are encouraged to create a culture within your organization that promotes collaboration and open communication. This is essential for effective problem solving and decision making. When individuals work together and share their ideas and perspectives, they can come up with innovative solutions and make better decisions. For example, imagine a team working on a project. If each team member works in isolation and does not communicate with others, they may miss out on valuable insights and ideas. However, if they foster a culture of collaboration, they can openly discuss their challenges and brainstorm potential solutions. This allows them to tap into the collective knowledge and expertise of the team, leading to more effective problem solving. Furthermore, open communication is crucial for decision making. When team members feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and opinions, they can contribute to the decision-making process. This ensures that decisions are well-informed and take into account different perspectives. For instance, if a team is deciding on a new marketing strategy, it is important for everyone to share their insights and concerns. This way, the team can make a decision that considers all relevant factors and increases the chances of success. By fostering a culture of collaboration and communication, you create an environment where individuals feel valued and empowered. This encourages them to actively participate in problem-solving and decision-making processes. Ultimately, this leads to better outcomes and continuous improvement within your organization. Lesson 10. Continuously reassess and adapt a system to changing circumstances and goals. In lesson number 10, you learn the importance of continuously reassessing and adapting your system to changing circumstances and goals. This means that you should never become complacent with your current processes and strategies, but instead, always be open to making improvements and adjustments. One example of this concept is in the world of technology. Companies that develop software or apps understand that the market is constantly evolving, and user needs and preferences change over time. Therefore, they must continuously reassess their products and adapt them to meet the changing demands. This could involve adding new features, improving user interface, or addressing any bugs or issues that arise. Another example can be seen in the field of marketing. In today's fast-paced digital world, marketing strategies that were effective in the past may no longer yield the same results. As a marketer, you must continuously reassess your campaigns and adapt them to the changing landscape. This could involve shifting your focus to different platforms, targeting new demographics, or utilizing new marketing techniques. In both of these examples, the key is to recognize that circumstances and goals are not static. They are constantly evolving, and in order to stay competitive and achieve success, you must be willing to reassess and adapt your system accordingly. By continuously reassessing and adapting, 
you can ensure that your system remains effective and aligned with your current circumstances and goals. This allows you to stay ahead of the curve, make necessary improvements, and ultimately achieve ongoing improvement and success. Thank you for watching Summary Secrets, your daily personal growth companion. If you found these lessons insightful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more condensed wisdom. Stay tuned daily for more.